Hello and welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming. Um, I think this will be part 8 and uh, I'm Aaron and if you haven't seen these before you can find the whole series at either my website at aaron.baher.biz right here or uh, my channel on BitChute which is my-garden. So in this one we're going to start programming a game of life. Um, Conway's Game of Life. It's sort of a, it's not really a game, it's a simulator that's been around for a long time. And I think it'll give us a chance to do some interesting things with assembly language, kind of a, a uh, jumping off point to um, doing something more complicated. But we've done a couple of fairly simple things so far, and I think this will be sort of a step up, something a little more complicated before we get to anything as tough as an operating system. So I'm going to start out here by creating a couple of files for it. The .org file just for um, just for notes about it, and then an assembly language file where we'll actually do the code. So let's go back. To our last one, let's just copy some basic stuff. Okay, so this will be game of life. All right, just some basic things to start. So we'll put the program at 1300, that's where we've been putting things so far and we'll call it life and we probably don't need that and so we just got a basic empty file to start basically all right let's go to this one all right so what is the game of life um it's a simulator that simulates a grid of cells and the cells either live or die based on how many neighbors they are. That's the, the basic idea. Um, so each cell each cell lives if it has well let's do it this way. A live cell stays alive if it has two or three neighbors now neighbors means all the means the eight cells next to it you know to its above and below to its sides and diagonally so the eight cells around it if two or three of those are alive then a living cell stays alive a live cell dies if it has fewer than two or more than three neighbors the, the idea being, if it has too few neighbors, then it starves, and if it has too many, it's, it uh, gets stifled. And a dead cell comes to life if it has exactly three neighbors. So those are the rules. Um, you've got, let's say you've got a grid. We'll just make a real quick grid here. And let's say you let's say we well, we don't use zeros. Let's say we use x's to represent living cells. So there's a couple x's there. Here's an x. Okay. So this cell right here that my cursor is on. In the next turn, every every turn you scan through all the cells, and you either they either live or die, you know, based on their neighbors. So this cell that my cursor is on right now would come alive in the next turn because it has three neighbors. It's, it's currently dead, let's say. Let's say the X's are live cells and the dashes are dead cells. It would come alive in the next turn. And you can look up, I um, should probably, well, I'll put a link with the comments um, that go with this video to Conway's Game of Life, but it's, it's pretty basic. Um, this X would continue to be alive because it has two neighbors same thing with this one same thing with this one so the next turn it would look like this and then that's that's stable that's going to stay that way it's not going to start it's not going to 
turn any more cells alive because there aren't any others that would have three. But now let's say let's say we started it out like this. Well, this one here has three neighbors, so it would stay alive. This one has four, so it would die. And so on. So basically every turn you scan through the whole grid and see for each cell does it have any neighbors does it have and does it need to be alive or does it need to die and then you go you, know, you, you do that turn after turn and eventually either they all happen to die or I mean, that's what usually happens usually they all die but there are some stable um, patterns like I said you know X, a, a two by two grid is, is stable so eventually it can get to a point where it just stabilizes it with some cells alive. Alright, so that's how that's that's how it works. Now let's think about what the code needs to do. So the um the screen memory in the Commodore 128 starts at four hundred. So we'll just make a note of that. Um, we won't worry about color memory for now. Oh, by the way, my layout here um, is a little different. I'm trying something different. Um, I have Emacs on the left where we'll be writing the, the assembly code. Um, on the right, we have a terminal with the monitor in it. And then up in the corner, I have the actual 128 um, going, the emulator going. And uh, that's the, the, green, the light green thing that's all full of junk right now just because I was messing around with a random number generator and then you got my smiling mug plugged in there um, and we also have let's see I think on screen six yeah we also have the uh, programmers reference guide for looking things up so come back to here all right so we need a place to save well we have the screen memory that's where we're going to display the game and that can also function as our our grid basically our grid of cells but as we go through the grid and check each cell on each turn we're going to act we're going to need a place to build the next grid basically we're going to need a place a, a working area to um to figure out what comes next so if we go to our uh let's see here whoops that's not what i want to do Nice picture of a guy there, but that's not what I was looking for. Um, okay, that's what I wanted to do. If we go to our memory map, the the screen is a thousand characters. It's eighty or it's forty by twenty five, and so that's a thousand. And so the screen itself starts at four hundred. Let's see, that's. past it that is right here okay so that's the beginning of the video matrix the text screen we'll just do this in text for now and then maybe later on we'll turn it into a, a prettier graphical thing um, and so then the question is okay w there's a, there's our thousand character text screen but now we need a thousand characters somewhere else basically 4k to save the to, to do our work to work on the next iteration of the screen we can't put it at 800 because then we would run into these kernel variables here and I don't want to we're not going to use the kernel but for now I don't want to have to kill it because we're going to be running the monitor and things so um, we have our own code and then there's the various stuff here so we don't we don't want to mess with any of that um, our code is going to go at 1300 because that's what we said in our assembler so what we can do is we can put it basically anywhere above that that we know we're not going to run into so and the next thing the next thing that actually matters is um, 1c100 which is the start of basic now we're not going to use any basic so we can put it there um, we could also put it at 2000 because that's where the bitmap goes if you're using graphics which we're not 
So basically we have a lot of choices. We just have to make sure we put it somewhere that we're not going to clobber anything else. So let's put our working area at 2000. That'd be the simplest, I think, for now. All right. So what does the code need to do? Well, the first thing we want to do is clear um, let's uh, let's move that up there. Um, first thing we want to do is clear the screen. Okay. And now the next thing we need to do is fill the screen with some cells. We've got to have some living cells to start. And so start some cells. Okay, we'll come back to that in a bit. Then we need to take a turn. Okay, now what does a turn involve? Well, a turn involves check each cell for the thousand cells. So we'll have to run through the thousand cells, and so there that's a loop too. How do we check a cell? Well, we check the neighbors. And based on our rules up above, we decide, is this cell going to be alive or dead? Alive or dead in working area. Okay. And then once we've checked them all, then we would want to copy our working area to our screen. So that's basically it. And then we probably want to pause because this is going to run. I'm guessing it's going to run too fast to watch it, but we'll see what happens. All right, so those are our steps so far. Now let's think about each step. So clearing the screen, we just need to, to do that. We just need to copy a space character basically to every screen position, and we'll do that in a little bit. Now, starting some cells, that's a little more interesting. How do we want to decide which cells start out alive? Um, we could pick them. We could just, you know, we could decide and just say, here, this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, I think it'll be more interesting if we do it randomly. So we can randomly turn alive let's say a certain number of cells okay and we'll we'll figure out how to do that as we go all right then we get to taking a turn we could check each cell all right so let's think about this with our grid down here let's you know let's pretend this is a thousand characters it's not that many but one way you could do that is you could start through the grid and you could go to the very first one here and you could say okay we need to check all this cell's neighbors let's you know check this one this one and this one and now this this cell is dead because it doesn't have enough neighbors and then we move to the next one okay check this one's neighbors this one this one this one this one this one it's going to be dead and this one's neighbors this one this one this one this one this one all right i think you can probably tell that if you do that you're going to be checking I mean, most, it's not, 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 this isn't true on the edges, but out in here, you're going to be checking each cell eight times, really, for each one of its neighbors. Every, every time, like, say, we want to check this cell right here, let me call it A, you're going to have to check, you know, this one, 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 this one. And then let's say you go to check B, you're going to be checking these three again. And that seems kind of, inefficient that seems to go because we've got a thousand cells to check here if we have to check eight neighbors for each one you know not counting the ones on the edge that don't have eight we're gonna have to check eight thousand cells so that seems seems a little inefficient seems like there might be a better way to do that and i'm going to pause here for a second because i've got a dog barking at me wanting to go outside Okay, I'm back. Bugs him when I'm not uh, when I'm talking to somebody and it's not him. All right, so let's think about another way to do this. What if instead of going to each cell and checking its neighbors, 
what if we went to each cell that's alive and told its neighbors that they have a, that they have an alive cell what I mean by that let's get rid of these let's say let's go back to the way I started out so here instead of checking you know we come to the very first cell here call it a instead of checking its neighbors we would just say this cell is dead so we're just going to move on we're just going to go and boom, 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 until we come to one that's alive okay. and then we tell in the working area let's uh let's make a copy of this let's say that's the let's say that's the screen memory okay and down here we have the working area okay so let's say for this one we'll call it a down here let's let's do it this way a b and c let's say we go we start through the screen memory looking for live cells we get to a and it's alive and so we say okay that means it is a neighbor for each one around it and so then we just tell each of its eight neighbors we just add one to each of its neighbors neighbor count let's say all right then we get to B it's also alive so so right so after checking a after processing a it would look like this we'd say okay each one of these has one neighbor then we'd get to B call it B and we'd do the same thing we'd say okay each one of it you know each each one next to B has a neighbor and so now those two each have two neighbors here's one so basically we'd be adding one to each cell that's around the B and this would still be one then C I have to remember that C was two we do the same thing start at, I'll start at the top to so I can remember where I started add one 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 and this was two okay so now we've only had to go we've only had to process eight neighbors for each cell that was alive we didn't have to process eight neighbors for every cell on the screen so instead of processing eight thousand neighbors we processed you know 24 so that seems like a big improvement now we would have to, so we've been through all the cells once and now we would need to run through them again and copy them to the which we figured anyway now we have to copy this structure to the screen based on what's here and there's going to be a little bit of an extra step here which we'll figure out as we go but because a cell that's dead only comes to life if it has exactly three but a cell that's alive stays alive if it has two or three so we can't tell just from this this map down here which ones of these twos will be alive because these twos up here aren't going to come alive because they weren't alive before but this three will the th any three will definitely be alive but twos will have to check and see was it alive before then it stays alive but if it wasn't it stays dead so I think that'll make more sense as as we get into it so that's the way I plan to do it um, which is going to be a little different than what I wrote here we're not going to check all the neighbors of every cell what we're going to do is we'll check each cell whoops check each cell if it's alive then we'll add one to each neighbor in the working area and then that's all we have to do there and then well actually there is one one thing we need to do up here which is clear the working area because since we're going to be adding one to each neighbor in the working area um, we have to make sure that all the working area cells start out as zero so we'll have to 
make sure we have that. Then for the copy working area to the screen part, <clears throat> we have to check the working cell and the screen cell. And if working equals 3, then it's alive. If working equals 2 and screen equals alive, then it's alive. And otherwise dead. Pretty sure that's right. So yeah, it's if it if the working area has three, it's gonna be alive. Yeah, that should be right. Try to think if I'm missing anything. Yeah, because if it has if it has less than two neighbors, fewer than two neighbors, it dies. If it has more than three, it dies. Otherwise, it can be alive. If it has three, or if it was already alive and still has two. Okay. So now we have our pseudocode. At least the basic, our basic pseudocode. So, going over here then, to the actual code, I'm going to put a label to say start. I'm going to go into assembly mode. All right. So the first thing we want to do is clear the screen. And before I do that, I'm going to go up here and create a couple of um, create a couple of um, addresses. So let me see. How did we have that before? Okay, Adra. Yeah. Screen. Okay, so I'm going to set I'm setting up the screen location and the work location. <clears throat> and I don't know if I'll actually be using those terms, but um, they're there as a reminder if nothing else. All right, so the easiest way to clear the screen is <clears throat> to do a loop. And remember, we have a thousand. We have a thousand. Uh, we have a thousand locations on the screen, starting at four hundred. And so, the easiest way to do that, we'll load X with zero. Load A with the. You know, actually, let's do this. Let's, because we're going to need to fill the screen possibly with different characters. So. Let's create a let's carry a subroutine called fill screen, okay. and it doesn't need to load A because we're going to pass A to it. That way we can put something in A. We can put a character in A, whatever character we want, <clears throat> and we can call fill screen then, and it'll fill the screen with whatever's in A. Let's do that. So the thing to do then is to store A <clears throat> in. Um, in screen comma x and then screen plus 250 comma x plus 500 comma x and plus 750 comma x and that'll fill our thousand locations in screen real estate with whatever value is in A at the time. And then we need to increment X, branch if not equal. Okay, and then this is where we got to be careful because I don't want to branch all the way back to the fill screen because I'm using X as my counter. So we need to put in um, actually, let's do it this way. That This uh, this assembler lets you use. I don't know if my um, I don't know if my mode will like that, but we'll see how it goes. What this does in this assembler is you 
instead of you having to use labels, named labels for everything, when you're doing just these these short local branches, you can use a minus to go back to the last minus like that, or you can use a plus to branch ahead to the next plus. So that's a, it saves you having to stick so many labels in and try to keep track of the names of all your labels and stuff. So what this will do is it will increment the X and then branch if X is not zero back to this minus and then run through the loop again. And so we're going to do this loop 200, 255 times, which that's actually not what I want to do because while that would be okay, that would work, it's a little sloppy because it means you're going to you're going to write five or well six locations well 24 locations um twice and you're also going to run over the end of the screen a little bit so let's do it this way let's make this 250 and let's make this decrement x because that way well yeah take a drink while I think the issue you run into then is Should be 249. I'm going to try something here. I don't know if this is quite what I'm looking for, but I'm going to try it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start a program jump to fill screen do that come back and then return and that's the that's the whole program right now so let's go ahead and illegal combination of command and addressing mode yeah um, something's what am I getting wrong here getting something wrong actually this Let's see, line 26. Oh, sorry. It's a decrement, which I, you would need a, a, an address there. I want a decrement X, not some address. Okay. So now, back to the monitor. Load. Load. Game. Or load life. And let's see what that looks like in, uh, let's do this first. Let's, let's fill this area with zeros. So, cause I had some other, I had some other code there. It's going to get confusing. Um, okay. So now we can just see the code we loaded in. All right. So the first thing it does is jumps to 1304 loads, um, loads A with 250 or sorry loads X with 250 which is what I wanted to make sure we get all this right okay decrements X branches if minus to 1306 all right so what happens if we do that it seems to have done nothing it did nothing so what am I doing wrong I'm probably it's it's my it's my branch it's my minus branch yeah that's that's the problem it's yeah okay so I'm, I need a better way to do that what I'm trying to do here is go what I want to do is go through this loop 250 times okay so yeah that's what I need to do 
we need to store since x if we do it this way x is going to be 250 the first time through the loop and 1 the last time through the loop and then it'll decrement down to 0 and fall through the branch and since it's going to go from 1 to 250 I need to drop all these indexes down 1 because it's going to be adding 1 to 250 instead of adding 0 to 249 that's how we need to do that there's a few different ways you could do that but I think that's I think that's the one I prefer um, it's the shortest in code the shortest uh, the shortest space it takes up so let's look and see what that looks like now yeah so now it's loading yeah it's loading 250 instead of 249 and then it's indexing from one point lower and now we can see what that looks like on the screen um, oh we need to do one more thing up here before jumping to fill screen we need to load a with the value we want to fill the screen with so let's do that 32 is a space and let's see what else was I gonna do um, we should add a little bit of we should add a comment here to say fill screen with a value or with value in a just to show that okay you need to already have the value you want to put on the screen or that you want to fill the screen with have that in the accumulator when you call fill screen all right so load it with 32 got to uh whoops 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 right. too many windows okay so now you can see we load a with um, 20 oh yeah yeah sorry I when I put it here I didn't use uh, dollar sign to tell that it's hex. I forgot the assembler defaults to decimal, which I should have known from down here. Okay, so 20 in hexadecimal is the space value. And so if we run that then, that fills the screen with spaces, which clears the screen. Um, the reason it was colorful before, by the way, was because I was, I was messing around with uh, randomizing the colors on the screen. We won't worry about color for the game now, although we could we could tinker around with that later. Um, in in the game of life, cells are only either alive or dead. There's there's only two possible conditions, and so there's really not much use for color. But you could you could add other rules to it or make it more complicated. Okay, so we have our we filled the screen or cleared the screen. So let's go back to our notes. Not that. The next thing is we want to start some cells by random and randomly turn them alive. Okay. So, how to do that? All right. I'm going to. Um, Let's make that a subroutine too. Well, no, let's let's not. Unless it unless it gets to be kind of long, then we'll break it out into a subroutine. So let's fill some random cells. Okay. Now, if we want to fill any particular cell, we got to think about, you know, how do you do that? Let's let's assume we can get a random number first of all, because we can. We can get any any random number from zero to two fifty five. But we want to fill anything within a thousand, you know, our our thousand cells, our thousand screen cells. So the question then is, okay, how do we 
you know, how do we go about doing that? Well, um, there's a couple different ways we could do it. We could say, okay, we want to fill a certain number of cells and then start picking random locations on the screen to put them in. That'd be one possibility. Another possibility would be to just skim through all the cells and say each one has like a 25% chance of being full. Okay, that would be another way to do it. I think that's the way we'll do it just because I think it'll, I think it'll be a little more interesting. Um, let's do that. Um, I just decided let's do that as a subroutine. Okay. So we want to skim, we want to run through the screen. So that's going to look a lot like this right here, where we have a loop that goes through all the possible screen positions and does something to them. So let's just copy that for now. Um, we don't know exactly what it needs to do yet, but we know that it's going to be a loop like this that does stuff. Okay. So, how do we decide whether a cell is going to be is going to be on or off? Well, first of all, let's get a random number, and the place we can get a random number is let's see. go to our book here. It's the SID chip in the Commodore, which is the sound chip, has an oscillator on it, which you can use to get a random number. Now, I don't know how perfect a randomness it is, but it's, it's fine for games and things. And it's right here at D41B. So if you read a value from D41B, you're getting a random, a random number from that oscillator. So, come back to our code here, and I'm going to add that value up here as an address. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll load A from random. And now we have to decide, um, are we going to, is, a, is that particular cell going to be full? Now, let's say we want it to be, um, let's say we want a 50% chance. Let's just start with that. We can use just one bit out of this and just say if that bit is on then you know it will be then it'll be alive so we can use the bit the bit function or the, the bit opcode to test that now the bit opcode is is weird and so we'll have to check the book we'll have to go back to the book on that um, find the opcodes here I might be looking in the wrong place. Sorry, this is one bit I don't always remember exactly how it works because you don't use it that often, but. And I'm not actually sure if I can use it. Well, actually, come to think of it, yeah. So the bit instructor performs logical AND with a memory address. Okay, yeah, you have to have a memory address um, to compare it to. So what we'll do, instead of loading A from random, we'll load A with zero and then we'll compare it with the bit command to random to the value at random 
and then we can branch if not equal back up to there back up here or no 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 can't do that we'll branch if not equal ahead well we'll, we'll branch somewhere we'll figure out in a second where we're going to branch to because we we want to branch on one thing or the other it's 50 percent, so it doesn't matter which but one thing or the other we want to branch because bit is going to set the let's see the bit instruction compares the contents and da -da. If the result of the operation okay well we can't branch on the zero we have to branch on either bit seven or bit six so either the <clears throat> either negative or overflow so the negative we can branch on bit BMI for bit minus or BPL for bit plus either one will, either one will work since we're going 50% here all right so if it let's say if we do want to fill that one then we're going to load A with, let's, uh, let's use 5.3, that's a heart, so that's going to be our, li our live value. So we'll load A with that, and we'll store that in screen plus two four nine comma x all right so just like down here except we're you know we're not filling the screen we're just storing a particular location then we need to do that again for the next because remember we're, we're kind of dealing with the screen in four chunks here since we we can only loop to you know up to 255 times we have a thousand spaces in our screen so we're kind of dealing with the screen in four chunks four 250 byte chunks and so we want to check against random again actually you know what let's just go ahead and load here with our heart that way we don't have to do that here because it doesn't matter what the value of A is as long as it stays consistent because we're just checking it against this random number. So we want to do that four times. Checking, you know, comparing it to the random number, whatever happens to be in the oscillator register at that moment. Branching if it's not the thing. And then storing if it is the thing. Okay. So let's see, let's go to that. Yeah. So this first one should be screen minus one. And then we just got to go ahead like before. All right, so where do we want to branch to here then? If this one, if we're not going to store here, well, then we want to branch to right here. So this is going to be a plus. So each one of these bit lines gets a plus. And this also gets a plus. So that each one of these can branch ahead to the plus and just jump over that store. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's think about this just to make sure this is all okay. The nice thing about using these bit um, operations is they don't actually change the accumulator. They just compare. So our accumulator stays the same through all this. All right. And that means we can also move this minus to here. We don't need to reset the accumulator every time through the loop because it's, it's not going to get changed. Okay, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's all we have to do there. 
So that's going to fill some random cells. And it should fill about half of them. It's not going to be exactly half necessarily because it's just checking each one and each, each cell has a 50% chance. But it should be pretty close to half. Alright. So, let's compile or let's assemble and run our code is getting a little longer um, now we have two jumps we jump first to the look you know to the um, screen clearing and then we jump to our random cells routine which is then right here all right Let's see. Oops, I got something goofed up over here, don't I? Oh. Oh, there it's back. Okay. Alright. So we filled everything with fives. And it's sort of... It doesn't really look terribly random, does it? You know, it looks a sort of, it looks like there's kind of a pattern there. And I imagine that's probably because the oscillator isn't really random, you know, isn't, isn't terribly random. Um, we might have to make the random, you know, the randomization of it better. Um, especially since we're just checking one bit of that value. But I think we'll, uh, I think we'll just go with that for now so we can move on to the other parts of this. But, um... Let's fill, let's see, the color memory is at D800 up to D, I guess, let's see, yeah, color memory is at D800, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so let's fill D800 to D900 with FD to... Okay, let's get rid of those colors. That was kind of annoying. All right, now that filled with fives, which I thought it was going to be hearts. Um, let's check the book here. Appendices we should have yeah we've got screen dis screen display codes uh, where's the heart there's the heart yeah eight three which five three I've got thirty five oh that, I forgot again I did it again forgot to tell it it's hexadecimal. Okay, filled it with hearts that time. Yeah, you can tell it's not purely random. There's definitely a pattern there, but it, it it'll get us started. That's the main thing. It'll give a it'll give our game something to start with. All right. So the next step then, we've we've randomly turned on some cells. Then we're gonna start our taking a turn process. Okay. So, take turn. First thing we want to do is clear work. Clear our working area. I think we'll put that in a subroutine. Because that's going to look a lot like our fill screen. Almost exactly like it. Except it's going to be our work area. And 
we're going to fill them with zeros because our work area is where we're going to want to count how many neighbors each cell has. All right, so that's our work area is at 2,000. Right now, there's just a bunch of junk there. Um, all right, so we jump to clear work, and that's going to clear that area, fill it all with zeros so that we can use that to count our neighbors. So let's go ahead and make sure that works. When we run that, it should, yeah, so now 2,000 is full of zeros. And that should go from 2,000 up to um, I guess up to 3,000. Or maybe maybe it's not. No, sorry. It should go from 2,000 up to um, 23FF almost because we have a thousand, not 1024. So yeah, so it filled in. A thousand spaces with zeros. Okay. So the next step then, we've cleared the working area. Now we have to check each cell. Okay. So this is going to look again we're going to loop through the cells so we keep doing you know we keep doing these loops and that's that's okay that's the way it works um, got to pause again to go let the dog back in okay so now we have to make some or we have to think a little bit make some decisions because <clears throat> up until now with like filling the cells and checking the cells and stuff um, or filling the random cells. I haven't worried about what order they were going in or which one got done when because it didn't matter. But now we have to think about that a bit because if we go over to our planning here, each cell, you know, we tend to think of them as X and Y coordinates. You know, the one up in the corner might be 0, 0, and the one in the bottom right would be, you know, 79, 24. Yeah, 7924, or no, 49, 3924, sorry. It's a 40 by 25 screen, so, you know, we're going from 0 to 39 in the X coordinates and 0 to 24 in the Y coordinates. So, you know, we think of it that way, but the in, in memory, it's just, they're just stored in a row, one long row of 1,000 cells from 400 up to, you know, whatever 400 plus 1,000 is. Um, 400 hexadecimal, I mean. So, um, so the question is, you know, e each cell then, like the very first cell, we could say that's zero comma zero in terms of coordinates, but it's also 0400 in memory. So we're going to have to work with it in both senses because we need to know its coordinates to figure out what its neighbors are, to you know, to figure out which which neighbors to look at. Um, but we also need to know its memory location to figure out, you know, where where it is in memory to, to put to put the data in it. So the question is, you know, can we which, which one do we want to start with and work to the other one? Either way, we're going to have to work from one to the other. So I would say we're probably going to start with the coordinates. We're probably going to work from the coordinates to the memory location. Um, you could do it either way, but I think it's going to be easier to to do it that way. Um, so what we're going to want is two memory locations. I'll call one XX, and we'll put that at FB in zero page. We're going to want these to be fast. And we'll call the other one YY. The reason I'm using two letters is just to keep to keep straight that these are coordinates on the screen. These we're not talking about the X and Y register here. These are just these are um, coordinates on the screen that we'll be calculating with. All right. So as we check the cells, we'll we'll be using those. So the first thing we want to do is 
um, let's see, we want to load A with, uh, well, with 39, decimal 39, and then that's going to be our X coordinate. And store that into XX, and then load A with 24 which will be our Y coordinate and store that into YY and then we're going to work with those two coordinates to work through the screen we're going to work backwards across the screen it doesn't matter what order we do them in we just have to make sure we hit each one exactly one time okay so then for each one we have to figure out where is it in our you know in our work in our working area where is that cell well each let's stop and think about this since each row has 30 or has 40 locations then basically a cell is going to be xx or let's let's do it this way yy plus or sorry yy times 40 plus xx and then that's going to be added to plus work okay so you're going to take the value of y because y is the number of rows so if you're on row 0 then you don't add anything for y if you're on row 24, it's going to be 24 times 40 because you're basically adding 40 locations for every row you come down. And then the X gives you the distance across. And then all that's added to your work location. So that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to calculate where we are in memory for this location, you know, for this particular cell. Okay. So to do that then, we need to be able to multiply by 40 and then add X to that so let's see are we gonna have to write a multiplication routine it kind of seems like we do because we haven't done that yet we've written a division routine but we haven't written a multiplication routine um, and we may have to let's see uh, I have to pause, take care of the dog again. Darn it. Okay, I'm back. So we're going to need a routine to find the memory location for each cell. So we need a place for it to do that work. Um, let's see, we'll call it... Uh, Um, we call it cell and because there are a thousand different locations we're going to need that to be a two byte a two byte location so that's actually going to be FC and FD so that's going to be 16 bits bits I should say okay so that'll be the memory location of X and Y so we're gonna to have to write a routine to figure that out so we'll call it um, xy to cell and we have to write that now so okay so I said before and let's let's copy that down here because we don't need it up there The way to do that is to take the y coordinate, multiply it by 40, add the x coordinate, and then add it to our work directory, which is or our, our work, the, the beginning of our work area, which we said was 2000. So, how do we do that? All right, well, first of all, let's see. All right, first thing we want to do is zero out our 
location, our cell location. So we'll store that into cell plus one, the high byte of the cell location. So, no, I keep forgetting, I don't need semicolons at the end of my lines. And we'll go ahead and load Y. Let's see. I'm going to stop and think for a second. Yeah, we'll and we'll store y. We already have or Okay. We stored Yeah. So we have our xx and our yy as locations, you know, zero page memory locations to hold the coordinates. So we need to load the yy value that we already stored and store that into cell. Okay, the low byte of cell. So cell is a 16-bit value, and so at this point it's going to have just the y value in the low byte of it and zero in the high byte. So right now it's just going to be equal to our y coordinate. Now to multiply that by 40, what do we need to do? Well, let's stop and think here for a second again. Um, you can multiply by powers of 2 by shifting bits. So we don't need to multiply the old-fashioned way by 40 because multiplying something by 40 is the same thing as multiplying it by 32 and multiplying it by 8 and adding those two together, right? If you have, say, 2 and you multiply it by 32, you get 64, and you multiply it by 8, you get 16, you add together 64 and 8, 64 and 16, you get 80, 40, by, 40 times 2. So anytime you can break a number down into powers of two, you can, you know, you can uh, multiply by shifting bits. You can't do that with everything, like say ten. Oh wait a second. Am I, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can do it with ten. I guess I couldn't figure. I guess I couldn't do that dividing because that's a little different situation. But, um, yeah. Yeah, that should work. So, because if you've got x times 40, that's the same thing as, because of the associative property, that's the same thing as x times 32 plus x times 8. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. So, what we need to do then is multiply it by 32, which we can do by shifting it 5 times to the left. And then we need to add that to multiplying it by 8, which we can do by shifting it 3 times to the left. So to shift it 5 times to the left, we can, let's see, we're going to have to ASL cell and then roll to the left cell plus 1 because remember we've got a 16-bit value here so we've got to deal with the two bytes together we want to shift to the left one or we want to shift the first one the low byte to the left that brings in a zero on the bottom on the the least significant bit and then we want to rotate the high byte so that we pull in the carry flag if if we rotate it off a one from the or if we shifted a one off from the low byte we want to rotate that one in on the high byte and we would need to do that five times. And that's going to shift that 16-bit value, multiply it by 32 by shifting it to the to the left five times. Now I could do that as a loop, um, but it would take longer. You'd be trade you'd be trading basically. You'd have fewer fewer lines of code. A little bit less space taken up in your program, but it would take longer. It would be a trade-off, and it's not really important in this case. Um, okay, so now we've multiplied the cell location by 32. Now we need to multiply the yy, our y coordinate, by 8 and add it to that. So we're going to need another memory location. Let's call it... Uh, temp and let's put this at b hundred 
because we're not using that for anything. So I can't put this all in zero page without finding some more locations to use. And we could always change the location later, but it's fine to just use it that way for now. So we need to put our Y coordinate in that and shift it the same way, but only three times now. So let's do the same thing again. Load A with zero. Store that into temp plus one. Load A with from YY. Get our coordinate again. Store that into temp. And you know what? Let's move these. Let's move this up here. We can save. We can save a couple of lines. We don't need to load. We don't need to load these again if we already saved them up there. So now we can do the same thing we did here with temp and temp plus one. And we need to do that three times. Now we need to add temp plus. We need to add temp to cell. So the way we can do that is load A from temp. Let's see. Yeah. Load A from temp. Clear the carry. Add that to the value in cell. And store that back into cell. Then we need to load A from temp plus one, add with carry to cell plus one, and store that back into cell plus one. Now, because we added with the carry, we're doing a full 16 bit addition here. Okay. So now we've added, we've multiplied. Um, the coordinate by 32 and we've multiplied it by 8 and we've added those two together and stored that in the cell so now cell should be y times 40 now we need to do something similar we need to clear the carry again load a from xx because now we need to add the xx to that and we don't know whether it's going to carry either so we'll load a from x add with carry to cell and then load A with zero and add with carry to cell plus one so if if there is a carry from this first add we're adding that carry to cell plus one alright so now we're up to this point of where cell should, e cell should be equal to y, the y coordinate times 40 plus x. And now we just need to add the work index to it, or the work offset, I should say. So clear carry again, load A with 20 to 0, and add that to cell plus 1. Okay, we don't uh, we don't need to mess with the bottom page because that's that's zero. We would just be adding zero and that'd be irrelevant. So we just need to add that to cell plus one and return. So that should leave cell plus one or that should leave cell equal to that equal to the y coordinate times forty plus the x coordinate plus the work offset. Alright, so let's come up here. I said check cells. Okay. What I'm going to do is before we, just to test this, before we wrap this in a loop, I'm going to load A, or let's just do this. Load A with 0, load Y with 0, or I'm going to store zeros into these because that's a simple one. That should end up at 2,000 because y, you know, 0 times 40 plus 0 plus the 2,000 should end up being 2,000. 
So it should end up storing 2000 in this cell location at FC. Yeah, okay. So let's see if all that works. That was quite a bit to do without testing or anything. So load life zero. Okay. And so we can see there's our jump to subroutine. 13, 17, that's going to be the X, X, Y to sell. Let's look at what's in. Okay, so right now, FA is 7, FB is 0, FC is 20, and F, okay, so what we want, what we expect to see is 0, 0, zero and then 20 that's what we expect to see there so let's go and all I see is plain zeros so something didn't work the way I expected it to uh, let's see I certainly missed, I definitely missed something here. Just had to figure out what it is. We did jump to subroutine here, so, okay. Let's, uh, okay, so 1317 is our XY to sell routine. And so that's right here. Let's put a break at 1317 and then go again. All right, so we stopped at 1317. A is 0, X is 0, and Y is 0. And now let's start stepping through. We store that into FD. Okay. So we stored that into cell. Also stored it into temp plus one. All right. Loading it, loading from FB, which is our Y coordinate, gets zero. Stored that into B00. Stored that into temp and also into cell. Okay, and when we're rotating these things since they're zeros that's just going to be lots of rotating zeros and then we get down to this clear carry so we're right here adding to the cell like I said every, everything is still zero 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 um, there's another clear carry so that's right here Last clear carry, and then load A with 20. Add that. Oh, I didn't store it back into the cell. That's the problem. And store that into cell plus one. Okay, so everything worked except I forgot the last line. Um, load life. Zero. Okay. Um, break. Let's delete our breakpoint and go thirteen hundred. Now. Okay, that worked that time. So it calculated, and since it was all zero, it was the only real calculation it did was at the end, it, and it it added the 2,000 and ended up with that. So now for another test, <clears throat> let's say we're let's say we're at x equals one and y equals one. Oops. I probably could have just changed that in the code easier, but.
Okay, now we see there our x and y coordinates are 1, so that's correct. Is 2028 the correct location? And it is, because 28 in hex is 40. Yeah, is 40, and so it put it at, put us at 20, you know, put us at 40 on, because now we're on the next line. Although, let me think, is that actually... Hmm, seems like maybe it should be one more than that, because I'm... One one should be forty one positions from or is that right? Let's see. Oops. I forgot I can't do that here. Um Let's go to line two, cell two, or row, row two, column two. Let's put it that way. Yeah, row two, column two. Let's see what that does. Hmm, 2050. It seems to be getting the row right, but not the column. I'm missing the X. When I'm adding the X, I don't think it's getting that right. Load A. Add with carry. Oh, there's the problem. I didn't store I didn't store that one back either. Yeah. Okay, so we need to add with carry to cell and then store A back into cell. And then here we add with carry cell plus one and you store that back into cell plus one. I think that's going to fix that. Make sure every add is followed by a store back into where it came from. Yeah, because we're to do the math you've got to take it out of the memory location at cell and cell plus one, do the math and then put it back as we're accumulating this value in cell. Okay, so let's Symbol and we go thirteen hundred. Okay, what do I what do I have in here? Oh I still have ones, okay. So we should have now yeah, twenty nine to nine because it's moved ahead one row and once one column. So now if we go to, let's say, um, row 2, uh, column 9, let's say. That moved us ahead to 216A, and I would imagine that's correct. Let's see. Um, eight thousand five hundred and fifty-four. If you take eight thousand five hundred and fifty-four minus eighty-one ninety-two, what do you get? Two, 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 two. That seems like too much. I'm not sure. I think here. What am I not? I might be multiplying something too much. I'm not sure yet. Let's see. Set the x coordinate 
to zero. So the only coordinate that matters is the y coordinate this time. Two, one, six, eight. Hmm. Yeah, that is certainly not right. It should just be 2009. Unless, wait a second, am I... I might not be clearing the cell first. That's, yeah, that's the problem. I'm not clearing out the cell location first. Um, maybe I am. Yeah, I load with I load zero, put it in there, and also in the temp location, and then yeah, that should be okay. Hmm, I'm going wrong here. Well, let's find out. Let's break at. Thirteen seventeen. Okay, so we have a a equal to nine um, because we were just we were just dealing with that, and right now okay, so right now the uh, the cell location still has the old stuff in it. So let's start stepping through. We stored that into cell plus one and also into temp plus one. Loaded A from the Y coordinate location, which gives, gives it nine. Stored that into cell, or stored it into temp and also into cell. So now at this point, Well, we still have 68 there, but that's because I haven't done the next thing yet, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, now it's going to shift that left and roll FD. And so now it shifted the 9 left, which turned it into 18. That's, that makes sense. And then shift and roll again. Now it's up to 2, 4, which is 32, 30, um, 36, yeah. So from 9 to 18 to 36. Doubled it again to be 72. Okay, so at this point, That's 256 plus 32, 288. That, sound, that sounds right. 9 times 2 is 18, times 2 is 36, times 2 is 72, 144, 288. Yeah, so that all worked. We multiplied it by 32 correctly. So now, what do we have at B100? That's also 9, so now it's going to rotate that. Okay, so it's rotated the 9 there. Oh, you know what? This is working fine. I was just getting X and Y backwards. Yeah, dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's working fine. It must be getting late. Um, yeah, so 4, 8 is uh, 
72, so that's correct. And now if we keep going, it's going to clear the carry <clears throat> and add it. And then it's going to load that, add it. And so now we have, if we check, we have 168. And we can see what that value is. 360. So yeah, nine times 40. Yeah, I just I just had the yeah I just had it backwards. Okay, so that's working. Okay, so it works with a with a y coordinate of nine and a x coordinate of zero. It works. Let's um, change the x coordinate. four because then we should get 364 as our result so if I look at that number 216 C uh, what was I doing before <laughs> Oh, because it, yeah, because it already added the 2,000 to that. Um, so 85.56 minus 81.92, so I'm back to figuring that out. Um, that's 364. Yeah, that's what I said we were looking for, 364. Okay, so that seems to be working. All right, so now I gotta stop and think. Where were we at? Yeah. Okay. So, but in actuality, we want to go from 39 to, you know, zero to 39 on the x's and zero to 24 on the y's. All right. Gotta stop and think for a second what we're doing here. All right, so that was just that was for testing. We don't actually want to jump to that yet. We'll put that down below. So now we have to stop and think. Okay, for our x and y coordinates, we have eight possible neighbors, but they don't all have neighbors. So first thing we have to do is go through the eight possible neighbors and figure out, you know, does this one have that neighbor? And if it does, then we'll be using this you know this routine here to figure out where to set that you know where to adjust that neighbor okay let's go back to our planning here and think about it a little bit clear the working area did we do that yet hopefully we did yes clear the working area all right um and then we're checking the cells so check each cell is it alive if it's alive okay so that's the first thing we got to think about is the cell alive <clears throat> if it is add one to each neighbor in the working area all right so how do we know if it's alive well we have to look at its location in the screen memory so we figured out its location in the working memory but now we also need to know its location in screen memory hmm Okay. Well, that's a little different. That's the same the same process except that's adding 400 instead of 2000 for the location that it's at. So that makes me wonder, maybe there's a way to maybe there's a way to do this. Yeah, let's do this. So let's say Adra offset. And we'll put that at B02. And then we can set the offset to where we want it before we call this.
and this can just be the high byte of the offset because both of them don't have, both of them uh, end on a page boundary. Okay, so then instead of using this 20 here, we can load this from offset and add that to it. Okay. So what we need to do then to find this location or to find this cell's location in screen memory. Yeah. Okay. Or to to calculate, not to find it, to, to calculate it and to put it in cell. That's the thing. We want to put it in cell. So we need to set the offset to 4. Store that in offset. And then jump to this. I think that's the way I want to do it. Because that will put the location of our current cell into cell it'll it'll put the screen location of our current cell in cell and then we can load y with 0 because we're going to do a um, indirect lookup on that or wait a second. Yeah, we can do that because cell is in zero page. That's the thing. It's got to be in zero page. So then we can load A from cell comma Y. That's an indirect indexed thing, which is going to go get the value from the location pointed to by cell indexed by Y, which I made zero because I don't want to add anything to that. I just want to get it directly from it. I think that's I think that's right. The indexed thing you don't use a lot. So I'm going to stop and think about it. Uh, let's see. looking at this earlier <clears throat> I just want to make sure I've got it got it right here <clears throat> yeah okay so that's going to load a from the address pointed to by the values at cell okay and then we're going to compare a to, let's see, okay, yeah, we want to compare it to, um, let's see, what are we, where, what are we calling our clear, fill screen, what do we fill the screen with? originally okay so empty cells are spaces so or dead cells or whatever we want to call them dead cells are spaces so we want to compare to 20 which is a space and then branch if equal to zero in other words branch if that if that's equal we'll branch ahead to plus Or well, no, let's branch back up to here. No, we can't do that. Hold on a second. We'll just branch to plus, and I'll put some question marks after that because that's got to be filled in. We've got to figure out where that's going to be because that's going to come a little later on. Because we've got what we've got here is two loops, or we're going to have two loops um, 
a loop on the x coordinate and then an inner loop on the y coordinate so we've got a loop through both of those things we'll be branching ahead to where we in, you know to where the loops end up <clears throat> so if it's not a space then it is a cell it is a live cell And so now we need to tell each of its eight neighbors that they have a neighbor, basically. That we need to increment their neighbor number. All right. So how do we do that? Well, for each one, what we'll have to do is load the x and y coordinate and then step out, you know, one up and to the left and then just one up and then one up and over and so on so let me stop and think for a second um, it'll probably be easiest if we use the X and Y registers to match the X and Y coordinates if that's if that's going to be possible here so let's say we load X with um, load X from XX and load y from yy. Okay, so now our x and y coordinates have the the coordinates of the cell. Now let's start with the one up and to the left. That's going to be one less for x and one less for y. So we would decrement x and decrement y. Now the question now is going to be how do we tell if those are out of bounds? How do we know whether that's gone off the screen? Well, let's see. If basically if, if either one was zero, it's going to be off the screen. <clears throat> I think yeah um, I'm just I'm trying to think I mean it'd be simple enough right at this point to say well if it's zero you know branch and, and don't do it but that's not going to be the case when we're on the right side of the screen or the bottom of the screen so I'm trying to I'm trying to think up a, a more generalized way to deal with it um, <clears throat> the thing that really matters is is x between 0 and 39 and is y between um, 0 and 24 that's what matters and if they're not if it's not then or if they're not then return then it's not a good cell so maybe we need a subroutine to handle that um, Yeah. Let's have a subroutine that handles that. We'll call it. We'll call it is in bounds. And we'll have it. <clears throat> excuse me. Returns one in A if coordinates are in bounds okay and zero if not let's just start out with that way and we'll see how that goes all right and the coordinates are in x and y registers um, okay, and bounds are x equals 0 to 39, and y equals 0 to 24. All right, so now we've defined what, the, what our subroutine has to do. Okay. <clears throat> Okay.
actually, you know what? Let's see. Instead of loading them, I guess that's right. Never mind. I thought I might have been duplicating some work here, but I think it's okay. Um, Alright, so we need to just start comparing, basically. So, CPX to zero. Well, actually, you know, we don't even have to we don't even have to think about whether it's less than zero because we don't have to deal with negative numbers. If it's if it was zero and we subtracted one, it's going to be 255 now. So all we care about is is it 39 or more? You know, is it over 39? If it's over 39, it's too much. So compare or CPX to 39. That should be decimal. Um, and then the question is branching what what do we need to branch um, I always have to stop and think about this which one is maybe I need to just check the book compare I, can, I always have to stop and think about which one is the which one is less than which one, or how? Compare X. Which one gets, or can't think, what's the word? Think what gets set, how? Um, I, was, I was looking for a better explanation. More of a complete explanation, I should say. Uh, am I in the right book here? Oops. It just been past what I was looking for. Or was I? No, oh, right here. Okay. Compare subtracts the memory from the register value. need to check another book but for now we will call it good with this so if it subtracts this value from the register so if the register is more than branch of plus ahead to the point where we okay so if it's too much then we're going to branch ahead and say out of bounds. Okay. Otherwise, we need to compare y to 24 and also branch of plus ahead to out of bounds. Otherwise, we're in bounds, so we load a with 1 and return. But if we come but if we plus, if we come down to plus, then we load A with zero and return. Okay, I think that's right. So we're going to compare X to 39. If it's more than 39, which should be if plus is set. Although, you know, it might set plus if it's equal to that, but we'll, that's something we'll have to test. 
I think I'm about to stop for today anyway. I'm not sure what I'm up to because I've got a few to, to uh, concatenate together since I had to stop to take care of the dog. Um, I'm getting kind of tired and losing my way a little bit here. Um, okay, so we're going to have to check on these compares and make sure that's right. But the idea being if either one of these is too large, if either one of these is more than the bound, then <clears throat> it should come down here and set A to 0 and return. Otherwise, it'll set A to 1 and return. So we would we would jump to is in bounds here. And then depending on A, um, we would know what to do with that particular cell. So we would compare to zero, and that's going to tell us whether it's in bounds or not. If it's if it's not equal to zero, then it's in bounds, and then we can go ahead and work with it. If it is in, yeah, okay. All right, I think that's where I'm going to stop because I'm getting kind of blind from looking at this. Um, need to think a little bit about how to basically we need to loop we need to do this eight times this business of checking for a live cell and so I'm thinking is there a way to put this in a loop even though you know you're going to go different directions you've got to go eight different directions and so you've got to you know sometimes you're going to be adding one to to x or at or subtracting one from x or adding one from y, subtracting one from y. I've got to think about is there a is there a smart way to do this rather than just doing it eight times with different values. Um, so I'll think about that a little bit before next time. But this was part one of the game of life, and I'm figuring it's probably going to take a few more parts. Probably uh, it's probably going to take a few hours altogether to get this done, or several hours. I don't know between four and eight I would guess I'm not really sure how much time I've got in on it today but um, we'll see it's, it'll take as long as it does so hope you've enjoyed this and that you come back for the next part and uh, that'll do it so I'll see you